that work. Cool. Well, it's really good to be here tonight. and telling him this command to study scripture. He's not saying, hey, Joshua, you know, you know, maybe if you have some spare time, you might want to do this. It'd probably be good for you. He is speaking directly to him with authority and telling him this is a direct command from God. And so that is for us as well. Um, and, jo and it says it in Joshua, it says it actually all over the Bible. There are plenty of other verses that lead us to why we should study scripture and the importance of that. The second reason is because we want to keep it in context. Um, if we're not keeping scripture in context, there's going to be room for error and misinterpretation. And um, have any of you decided that you wanted to, or you maybe you thought, maybe you should read the Bible, so you, you don't know where to start, so you just pick up the Bible and think, well, I'm just going to turn to whatever page um, I open up the Bible to, and whatever I read, whatever I land at, the first verse that... I set my eyes on, I'm going to read that, and that's going to be what God has for me. And so you do, you pick it up, and you probably, you know, find yourself somewhere in the Old Testament, and you read a, a verse, and you think, I have no idea what I just read. How does that even apply to my life? So that's really not how we want to approach Scripture. We wouldn't do that with any other book we read. We wouldn't just pick it up and turn to chapter 5 and start reading that way. So we really should not do that when we open the Bible and start reading it. We need to have some more structure. So, um, and then um, the, um, the third reason we need to keep um, to study scripture is because, and this is my favorite, we need to be able to defend our faith. So if you are, have surrendered your life to Christ and you call yourself a Christ follower, it is absolutely important that you are able to defend your faith. Because being a Christian, it's not easy. I don't know if any of you have figured that out yet. It is, it's not easy. Um, there are plenty of reasons why. And so if we look up in um, Ephesians 6.16, it tells us, In every battle, you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. So there's a little word within this verse that stood out to me, and that's the word will. And that stood out to me because we know that we're going to come across areas in this world, in this life, that are going to be difficult. We will face difficult times. We're going to second-guess ourselves. 
we will have peers and possibly family members even um, who will challenge the way we think and it'll make us start to question our beliefs. We will at some point in our lives become tired and vulnerable and even tempted. Jesus was tempted. Satan will mess with our thoughts. Satan gets in our head and he tries to mess with our thoughts. He tries to spin things around to make um, situations sound appealing, to lure us in, to things that we probably said we would never do or thoughts we would never think. He has this way of twisting it around to make us think, hey, this isn't so bad after all. So in these times, it is absolutely necessary that we are able to pick up the Bible, our spiritual sword, and speak up. We need to know God's word. We need to have his word all around us. We need to have it replayed in our head continually. That way, when Satan comes, we can speak God's truth back to him. We can call out God's promises with confidence. We can say things like, I am a child of God. I am dearly loved. I have value and worth. God has an amazing plan for my life. I have a strong and a powerful mind. We have such strong and powerful minds. Praise the Lord. So empower yourself with these truths, and you will feel God's word come alive. You'll sense his spirit inside of you, and you'll start to realize that it's not by your strength, but it's by his. It's through God's strength, that you'll, and you'll crave more time with him, and you'll, you'll want to be around him. So the more that you're surrounding yourself in scripture, the more that you'll want to be in scripture. So I have an illustration and, oh, not that yet. <laughs> Sorry. You can, uh, you can go back on the slides. Thank you. And um, I have a, Ainsley's gonna grab it for me. Thank you, Ainsley. So I brought up um, this painting with me, and I just wanted to kind of, maybe you can take this off. everybody can see it, but I encourage you to come and take a look at it. Um, <laughs> Alright, so I brought this illustration to kind of break it down a little bit and make it more relatable to you guys. So if you were to come and look at this painting, <clears throat> You'd probably look at it for a few minutes and think, oh, that's a nice painting. Look at the use of color. Look at the brush strokes. It's, it's very abstract. You might make your own observations and assumptions about this painting and probably walk away. And yeah, that, that's the end of your day. Um, but in reality, you don't know anything about this painting. None of you do. None of you have probably seen this unless you've been in my home um, because that's the only place it has been. It hasn't been in church before. And the reason you don't know anything about this painting is because you haven't taken the time to get to know it. You haven't asked questions surrounding the painting. So some questions that you could ask is, number one, who painted it? And do any of the students in here think they know who painted this? <laughs> All right, who do you think it is? Bryn Gillette. Yep, Bryn Gillette. And why is it you think that this is Bryn Gillette's painting? Uh, because I actually see Absolutely, you do. And um, so, you've, so you've seen his work. If any of you don't know Bryn Gillette, he's a very gifted artist. And he um, attended this church for very many years. And he would actually go on stage during the sermons. He would be there and paint as the sermons were being preached. And the Lord would speak to him and give him um, these beautiful works of art that um, brought in elements of the sermon into his work. And um, so you are familiar with Bryn's work because it's, you've, it's in your home. You're surrounded by it. You see it. And there's probably some paintings still here within this church. And um, 
So just like, just like the, um, at, you know, getting to know this painting a little bit more, some of the questions. Um, it, well, let me let me um, go back a little bit. So, yes, I better look at my notes. So a couple more questions that you could ask um, in order to get to know this painting better, in order to understand it would be, when was it painted? Who was it painted for? Um, was it one person or a group of people? And why was it painted? So just to give you a little bit more insight into that, I'll answer those questions. So Brandon's a good friend of ours. He um, he came to our home one evening and was you know said that he wanted to paint for us. Um, sat with my husband and I and we, chatted for a while, and then he decided um, that evening that he was gonna paint. He took out all of his tools and he began to paint in our home. And so if any of you know Bryn, you know that he's not a surface level guy. He's somebody who likes to go deep. So within his paintings, there's always something more. There's, it's not something that you can look at you know, for a couple minutes and say, that's great, I, I got it all figured out. You have to study it, you have to look into it further. So. Um, so as you can see, there's this um, this like angelic figure right here, and it has its arms stretched out like this. And so it's kind of creepy. You might you might think that some people have thought that when they've seen this painting, and that's actually accurate because if you know any of the um, interactions that people have had with angels in the Bible, they they're pretty scary. They they're terrified actually when they interact with angels. Um, so we have that, and that that um, angelic figure has, is like covering, and if you see closer in here, there's some figures, and um, those figures are actually my family, so it's my husband and myself, we're holding hands, and we're each holding our, our daughter's hands, and um, I'm holding my son, who was an infant at the time, and this painting is really significant to our family because um, it was right before we were entering in a really difficult season, and it has always served as a reminder that we um, are covered by God's protection, his angel wings. And, um, and it was pretty awesome because we had a neighbor at the time who came over, and she was, um, she was really intrigued by it, and we were kind of explaining to her what the painting meant. And she said, I see myself in that painting. Like, I, I see other figures in there. And we said, yeah, there are absolutely other people in there, and God's wings are big enough for everybody. Everybody is protected by God. So now you have like further insight to why this painting is powerful, what, what the meaning is behind it. And the reason that I brought this to your attention is because the same principles that go for getting to know artwork uh, apply for getting to know scripture. Asking questions is really key for getting to know the word of God. So, um, so now that we've got a little bit of insight in why it's so important to study scripture, let's kind of dig into the how. Um, and first up, we want to talk about um, having a Bible. So you all hopefully brought a Bible. If you didn't, that's no problem. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the one. So I just really quickly wanted to talk about different Bible translations. And I um, wanted to refer to it as, you know, different like chocolate. That's so I just, there are a whole bunch of different Bible translations. I just grabbed a few, um, but there's the original Hebrew or Greek and to me. That's like 100% pure chocolate. Has anybody tasted 100% pure chocolate? The cacao? What does it taste like? It's bitter, yeah. And that's kind of like the Greek. Like unless you know Hebrew or Greek, you would not be able to understand it. So. The next up is um, King James Version, so it was translated into English, but there's a lot of thous and shalls in that version, so it's it's still not very appealing. I would call that like 80% dark chocolate. It's you know you can you can read it, but you're probably not going to love it. Um, and these are all different flavors, I should say. Um, everybody prefers their own different flavor of chocolate, unless you don't like chocolate at all. But we won't go into that. Um, <laughs> Just like the Bible, everybody has their own flavor that they prefer. So there's the NIV, that's like plain milk chocolate. That's what I grew up on, um, studying the, well, the NIV within my family. 
And then the New Living Translation, that's like caramel filled milk chocolate to me. That's actually what um, the version that I, um, when I went off to college, I got a new Bible and I wanted to have a different version that I felt like I could relate to a little bit better. So that, and then there's the message, which we could call white chocolate. And it's still the Bible, it's just a different flavor. It's just up to, to you what your preference is. But there are different versions, so if you feel like you don't connect with a certain version, there's another one to hopefully get you to engage with it a little bit better. So now um, I just wanted to kind of go more into how we study the Bible. I want to make sure you guys can walk away and feel like you've got a good grasp on that. First off, you need to make time, um, and which is it's a challenge. I know you guys are all busy. You have activities. Some of you are preparing to go off to college, and time is not something that we have a lot of. But... Um, Studying the Bible is a spiritual discipline. It's just, it's not going to happen unless you make it happen. And I guarantee tomorrow, if you happen to have an extra 30 minutes in your day, um, and you could either have a snack or make a TikTok or have, you know, call a friend, if you had all of these options laid out before you, um, picking up your Bible and studying scripture may not be the very first thing that you decide, hey, I'm just going to do this. So it's something that you have to plan to do. Um, and then the next step, when you do um, take the time to sit down with your Bible, you want to pray. You want to ask God to speak to you, um, invite him into that time, and say, Hey, God, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. I want to hear whatever it is you have to say to me. So please open my eyes and my ears. You want to make sure you decide what you're going to study. And it can be a whole passage. It's probably a little bit better to start small with a verse or two. Um, but it's important that you read the entire chapter um, in order to gain, like we talked about, the, the context, to have the knowledge, to know how, you know, to know what it is that these verses are talking about. Um, and then you want to make sure you journal. Um, you want to read, you want to be able to journal, write down all of your thoughts, ask questions, um, observations, anything that stood out to you, anything that's confusing to you. If you feel like something is conflicting or out of um, with another scripture that you've heard before, you know that that's something that you need to write down because nothing in the Bible will contradict itself. So in my, in my mind, whenever I come into contact with a scripture that doesn't make sense to me and I think, huh, that seems like it's contradicting something else, I know that the problem isn't within the Bible, it's, in with, it's within my thinking of it, and I need to learn more in order to understand it better. So then we have, our next point is learn. Um, it's important to look up some facts about the book that you're reading. Um, and most Bibles um, will have that, like a, an overview at the beginning of the, the chapter, at the beginning of the book. And you can go back and you can reference that. It'll tell you maybe who the author is, why they're writing the book, when they wrote the book, and some other key facts that will help you. If you have a Bible that doesn't have that, then that's fine. You can hop online and you can look that up. Just type, type in like the book of Acts and you'll get a whole bunch. You just want to make sure that you don't get sidetracked while you're on the internet. Um, and then also just having um, other resources to help you um, to learn. So one resource that's really wonderful is um, the Bible Project. They have an app and they have videos. Um, you can find them on YouTube. They are um, illustrations, of illustrated videos that really break down the chapters um, and the books of the Bible to give you a better understanding of it. I know some of you here have seen those videos and um, I know they've really impacted my life. So the Bible Project, that's something you definitely want to look up. So the, another resource that I like to use are cross-references. There are many different ways to study the Bible. And um, cross-references is a great way to use scripture to study scripture. So I have in my last slide, There's a, these are just two examples of where you can find cross-references. You'll see that it's really tiny, but they are other verses marked alongside verses in your Bible. So you can actually go to another place in your Bible and find um, something that's similar or maybe says the same thing. 
And so that's just a really helpful way to, to know that that scripture is being backed up somewhere else in the Bible. Oftentimes in the New Testament, um, they will reference the Old Testament to um, prophecies and stories that um, are that kind of go hand in hand. So, um, that's all I have. <laughs> so, um, and I can't do it. and there's three by five cards. So you're gonna have some time with your small group to actually break down a passage in the Bible. And actually there's a couple of verses that we're gonna break down together. So then you can you know, have your small group time to ask questions. You can, um, your leaders can guide you to that. So after that, then you should be able to go home and to continue to do this on your own. Um, but I just wanna encourage you to make it a habit, to make it happen, because if you don't make time for it, Thank you so much, Rachel. Oh, that was fantastic. I love studying scripture, so this is one of the things that excites my heart. And I love like the analogy with painting of how we can get to know the Lord more by asking those questions and digging in. So I'm really excited for small group time where it's going to allow us like just some opportunity to do that with each other and some great questions and digging into scripture. So I'm gonna pray here, and then you guys can dismiss to your rooms after that. If you don't know where you're going, um, just find one of us leaders, and we'll get you ahead in the right spot. But dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you this evening. I thank you so much for the opportunity to be here, and all under one roof, and just worshiping you, Lord. Thank you so much for this wonderful talk to open up our hearts to study your scripture. I ask right now in your name, Jesus, that you just come and pour out your spirit on us in a new way that stirs up an excitement inside of us for your word. This is your letter to us that we have free access to. Let us have fresh revelation, eyes to see you, ears to hear what you want to say to us this evening. We just ask that you be with us in our small groups. Thank you for going before us. Prepare our hearts to hear from you this evening, Lord. In your holy name we pray.